right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things. Today I'm going to be doing the intimidating TBR pile tag. I was tagged by Olivia Pope and also Caroline from BBC Girl. I will link both of their channels down below and you should definitely go and check them out. Olivia Pope likes literary fiction and really loves the author John McGregor and Caroline loves the Victorians. What more can you ask for in people? Not much. Go watch their channels. So first off, I have a very, very long TBR. When I made my TBR bowl at the beginning of 2016, I wrote down a long list of all the books that I physically own or own on Kindle that I want to read and there were over a hundred and that's not including all the books that I want to read that I don't own that I want to get from the library or buy or that I want to borrow. There are a lot of books, a lot of books in my life. So this will just be a very 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 small selection of all the books I really want to read. It's a very long TBR. It will never end. So question one is, what book have you been unable to finish? Now there are not many books I have been unable to finish. I am not someone that DNFs books because I just am concerned that the last 10 pages might be like the greatest thing ever and that I might miss them if I stop halfway through. So in general I always finish books. However, saying that, this beautiful Bedtime Stories Everyman's Classics anthology has been on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads since something like October and I haven't picked it up for about six months. I'm about a quarter of the way through and it's a series of stories from a variety of different authors from a variety of different time periods that are all kind of not necessarily fairy tale-y but a bit sort of dark and vaguely inspired by fairy tales or that kind of thing. It's not that I haven't been enjoying this, it's just that when I'm reading a short story collection that's all by one author or that has like a really tight theme to knit them together I tend to read them all in one go but with a book like this that's an anthology there's nothing to like pull me back into reading it because even though I've been enjoying all the stories they're all completely different so there's nothing to immediately make me read on. I actually own two other similar Everyman short story collections one is New York stories and one is London stories and I really want to read both of these and I think I would probably enjoy them more because I would want to read on because of the setting and the kind of connection between the stories in that way but until I finish reading bedtime stories I feel like I can't start the other two so so yes, I really should go and finish this at some point. Maybe in July I will actually try. Question two is, what is a book you haven't read because you haven't had the time? All of them really. All of them are just because I haven't had the time and although I do read quite a lot of books a month I just there are so many books that I want to read always. For this one though I'm gonna say June by Frank Herbert. I do want to read this. I hear good things about this. I hear it's an interesting science fiction novel but it's about 600 pages and it's always at the bottom of my list because I'm interested to read it but I'm not like dying to read it and there are a lot of books I'm dying to read so it just keeps on getting like further and further down the list. Next a book you haven't read because it is a sequel. I still haven't been able to work out from everyone's videos and a lot of people have been doing this tag, whether this means a book you haven't read because it's a sequel to a book you have read, or a book you haven't read because it's a sequel to a book you haven't read. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna say Slade House by David Mitchell. I know it's not technically a sequel, but apparently it is very connected to The Bone Clock, and apparently I hear that you'll get much more out of Slade House if you have read The Bone Clocks, and I really want to read both of them, but The Bone Clocks is really long, and Slade House is quite short, I would get through it much faster, but I feel like I can't read Slade House until I've read The Bone Clocks, which I'm planning to do at some point quite soon, but I still haven't done. Next, a book you haven't read because it is brand new. I'm gonna say Death and Mr Pickwick by Stephen Jarvis. As you may have noticed from my birthday book haul last week, the week before, I have no idea, I'm pre-filming this. At some point in the last few weeks I did a birthday book haul. This was one of the books I received for my birthday, although I did receive quite a lot of books for my birthday, this one was the one that arrived last, so this is the most recent addition to my TBR list, and it looks very good to me. Next, a book you haven't read because you've read another book by the same author which you didn't massively enjoy. I'm gonna say most of the works of George Eliot. I have read Middlemarch and Silas Marner and I didn't hate them, I just didn't love them. I found them interesting in terms of what George Eliot was doing but I found her writing really dull and there are lots of other books that she has written and I know some of the plots of them or I know bits about them and they sound really interesting but I just haven't been able to pick up something else by her because I'm concerned that I will find it a bit dull as I did with Middlemarch. The main one I really want to read is Daniel Deronda. I saw a brilliant BBC adaptation of it and it looks like a fascinating, fascinating story but I just I'm um, concerned that I don't like George Eliot's writing style. However, it's been a very long time since I read George Eliot. It's been something like seven years. So me and from Beyond the Pages and Alicia from Eggs Libris are planning on doing a buddy read of Daniel Deronda in the next month, I think. So hopefully I will get over my George Eliot fears and enjoy Daniel Deronda. Next, a book you haven't read because you're just not in the mood for it. I'm gonna say Any Human Heart by William Boyd. So quite a while ago, like about five years ago, there was a TV adaptation of this and I watched the first few episodes and I really liked it and I purposefully stopped watching the TV adaptation halfway through because I was like no I'm gonna read the book and then I'll finish watching the TV adaptation after the book. I bought the book 
didn't get around to reading it and then have just never got around to reading it so this has been sat on my shelves for quite a while at the time i really wanted to read it i was really enjoying the adaptation it's just my kind of thing you know it, the whole story takes place over a really long period of time and it's all about the changes in this man's life and the people he interacts with and it's sort of set across a broad section of the 20th century it's just the kind of thing i love but because it's been so long now since i bought this and it's been so long i've been meaning to read it i've just kind of lost the excitement for it so i would really like to read it but it always gets put down to like the bottom of the list because i've had it for so long that i no longer have that like burning excitement but yes i should probably try and read this at some point next a book you haven't read because it is humongous and that like a few other people's answers is the luminaries by elena catton i know that marie burke whose channel i will link down below she is very good she also said that this was the book she hadn't read because it was humongous in her intimidating tbr pile tag and i think me and her and a couple of other booktubers are going to be doing a buddy read of it later in the year so hopefully i will finally get through this and have some support to get through it but it is really massive and i bought it two years ago and when i bought it two years ago i was really really excited to read it and then the excitement has kind of diminished and i can't remember much about it at all it does sound really good and i know olivia pope enjoyed it so i am looking forward to reading it it's just it's really long i don't think i've ever read a non 19th century book that is this long next a book you haven't read because it was a cover buy but then you heard bad things about it i don't really have anything that quite fits that but i bought the miniaturist because i've heard lots of good things about it and then i probably heard lots of bad things about it so i still haven't read it even though it was in my tbr bowl for may and i, I didn't read it and i failed but i would like to read this soon olivia pope recently did a review saying that she really enjoyed it and she felt like a lot of the reason why people were not enjoying it was because they thought it was about something slightly different and that it was going to have a slightly different emphasis so it does actually sound really interesting and i do think it sounds like my kind of thing and i like historical fiction so i will read it and i will see hopefully at some point maybe in july maybe later who knows at some point yes anyway finally what is the most intimidating book in your tbr pile and i'm gonna say the odyssey and the iliad i've owned these for six seven years and i'm really interested to read them because i would i would quite like to read some ancient classics but i just i haven't ever read any ancient classics and the idea intimidates me maybe i need to go watch more jean bookish thoughts and hear her tell me about how great it is but i just i'm just a bit unnerved by the thought of these and who knows maybe one day i'll get to them maybe i won't we shall see there we go those are lots of books that i really ought to read and haven't yet there are many many more so many books always so many books but before i go i am going to tag some people i don't think any of these people have done it so far i have checked but maybe by the time this goes up in two weeks they will have done because everybody seems to be doing this tag and maybe you've already be ta been tagged anyway but if so you are now double tagged so i'm going to tag crystal lynn who is a very new booktuber who uh, this channel i'm really enjoying i'm also going to tag lauren from lauren of the books i'm also going to tag alicia from ex libris and that will do for now I'll be back very soon with another video and in the meantime happy reading and I wish you all the best of luck with your very long TBR lists.